Intel's brand new Comet Lake CPUs have finally launched, and the feature that I wanted to talk about today is Intel's new strategy on how they're going to mitigate the increased thermal load from this generation. It turns out when you throw more cores and push an old process node to higher frequencies, things are gonna get pretty toasty. The 10900K, for example, has a power level one or PL1 TDP of 125 watts, but also has a PL2 state that can go up to 250 watts, with motherboard manufacturers specking out their boards to accommodate well over 300 watts. So what has Intel done to overcome this? Well, apparently silicon is a very poor conductor of heat, so they went and shaved off unused portions of the silicon from the top of the die and extended the heat spreader down, which is a much better conductor. That along with the solder tim should help in extracting the heat out of the die and substrate much more efficiently. This is important for Intel because their marking machine has been really pushing their thermal velocity boost feature on the i9 SKUs. For example, the 10900K under the right thermal conditions, provided that you have <laughs> beefy enough cooling solution, will allow it to enable PL2 and boost all the way up to 5.3 gigahertz single core and 4.9 all core. Now this is all great, but what I wanted to know is if we can get better temps from deleting, and if it is better, to what degree? So we can determine whether the time and risk is even worth it. Intel shaved the die about 800 to 500, so hopefully this doesn't change my odds of deleting and replacing the solder tim with liquid metal without causing a failure, since the process on the old 9900K was already somewhat risky and a pretty involved job to get it performing optimally. Okay, so to delete this, we're gonna be using a kit I got from Rocket. It's a kit that I've used on the 8th and 9th gen CPUs without any failure so far. The way this tool works is that you have two sections, the base that holds the CPU in place and the top portion that has a mechanism that applies horizontal pressure to the IHS, pushing it free from the adhesive and the solder. Now we get to the point that always makes me sweat. I always get a flash of something going absolutely wrong and I just kill a completely brand new CPU. But uh, yeah, let's go for it. With everything together, hand tighten the screw until it's right against the IHS, then start applying pressure with the LN key. You'll feel the tension start continually building and eventually start loosening up. Since Intel uses solder, the IHS won't be completely free yet. You'll probably have to flip the CPU around 180 degrees and repeat the process until the IHS comes completely loose. With the IHS off, you can see that it's a huge mess. To clean the die off, I'll be using Rocket Cool's Quicksilver. What people normally do to the relatively soft solder is they use a razor blade to scrape off the die and IHS. Sandpaper also helps smooth things out, but I think using Quicksilver to dissolve the indium is a much more elegant solution and really minimizes the risk of potential damage to the die and the IHS from scratches or gouges, which we definitely want to avoid doing since liquid metal is not great at filling in gaps on surfaces like thermal paste is. Now that we have the CPU and IHS separated, I'm gonna start by removing all the adhesive using a variety of plastic tools. With everything scraped off and looking quite nice and clean now, I'm gonna start securing the CPU to the rocket deliter with tape exposing only the die to start working on getting the indium off. With everything taped up and protected, we are good to go. Apply a few drops of the Quicksilver throughout the die and start agitating it with a Q-tip. Now this part isn't very hard, but you have to be very, very patient. Keep working the Quicksilver into the indium, and when you see it pull up, drag it off of the die to the taped off areas and repeat the process. It's hard to see, but when the die starts getting a little bit more dull in appearance, you know that you've gotten the solder off. Keep doing this on the die and the IHS until everything is spotless. This took me quite a bit of time and I used way more Q-tips than I thought it would. So if you're in the same situation, I feel your pain, but it'll be worth it. Now, if you wanna go that extra mile and lap the IHS, this is the time to do so, but I'm pretty lazy right now, so I'm gonna move on to the next step and just polish everything up. This stage is a two-step process. With a bit of paper towel and a dab of flitz from the Quicksilver kit, work it into the material until you see a nice, clean shine. When you're happy with the results, wipe it down with a clean piece of paper and some isopropyl alcohol. It looks super good. All right, with everything cleaned out, it's time to put down the liquid metal. A trick I learned with these syringes is that you want to pull the plug out a little bit before you start pushing out the LM. Sometimes it gets stuck and you end up shooting liquid metal all over the place. 
So the liquid metal is one of those things where less is more. So you wanna start with a very small amount and use a Q-tip to work it into the dye and nice and slow. When you have good coverage on the dye, apply it on the appropriate areas of the IHS as well. At this point, you can seal it up with some sealant or let the socket hold the IHS in place. There's a few more things that I wanna test on this proc before I seal it up for good, so I'll be saving the sealant for later. For testing, I'll be using the ASRock Z490 Phantom Gaming ITX motherboard, and to cool the 10900K, I'll be using two different 240mm all-in-one coolers, one from Cooler Master and another from Corsair. I found that the difference between the temps before and after were nearly identical anyways. I overclocked the CPU to an all-core frequency of 5GHz and ran Cinebench R25 times back to back before and after deleting. I also made sure that the CPU clock speed was at 5GHz the entire time. So here's a breakdown of the temperature differences. So from my experience, it seems like you can expect anywhere from two to nine or so degrees Celsius improvement, which is more than I was expecting with all the new improvements but with my total CPU temperature package at about 89C before and 83C after deleting, I'm still at 100% fan utilization, so it's not gonna help me with my fan curve or anything, but still a cooler proc is a happy proc. So was it worth it? I would say it depends. If you're just trying to extend the PL2 boost duration and wanna keep your temps under control for that, then probably not. Even with overclocking, unless you're shooting for something sky high like 5 gigahertz on all cores and want to maintain that frequency for long periods of time and not clicking your CPU too much, then well, of course, any improvement is a welcome improvement. Hopefully we can get better performance once direct dive frames start coming out for the 10th gen procs. Anyway, so you know I said earlier that this process always makes me sweat and so far I've had zero failures. Well, zero failures is still technically true, but I did screw up pretty badly. So when I was filming the deleting portion, I wasn't paying attention and was focusing too much on my monitor that I didn't tighten the top portion of the deleting tool enough. So when I went to torque it all down to remove the IHS, the metal mechanism had too much play in it and it ended up going straight down into the CPU PCB and scraping the top layer off. So yeah. It sucks, but fortunately, I think I dodged a massive bullet because after extended testing with the CPU overclocked, it seems like the CPU is doing okay. Now, could I have cut all of this out? Yes, probably. I, uh, with some creative B-roll angles, you would probably would have never known, but I figured you guys would have enjoyed my misery. So yeah, don't be me. Don't do what I did. Anyways, that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this scary but fun mod. I'll have an overclocking guide for this proc and the 10700K out fairly soon. So with that, thanks for watching, like, subscribe, it really helps me out, and I'll see you guys next time.